And good evening and welcome everybody to the Chris Nelsado Show here on Newsmax TV. Let me start here. Tomorrow, Joe Biden meets with Vladimir Putin. Many Americans are wondering just how badly Biden will disadvantage the United States, how much groveling he's going to do, how much caving in he's going to do in an effort to placate this American adversary. For a clue to Biden's state of mind and how well he will handle Putin, we thought we'd look at how Biden is handling his adoring biased press. Reagan said, trust but verify. What do you say to Vladimir Putin? Well, look, I mean, he has made clear that... Uh, uh, The answer is, I believe he has in the past essentially acknowledged that he was, uh, there are certain things that he would do or did do. Suffice it to say, I, I don't think I have high hopes. Many of you were wondering, as I am, how in the hell did we get to a place in America where majority thought that Biden was at all interested, qualified, or physically up to the challenge of leading a pro-American government? The other day, a well-known politician told me, quote, we're in a war for the future of our nation, end quote. This politician was right. Some Americans are allied with enemies of America, both foreign and domestic. Most of us, of all races, colors, and creeds, are united against enemies of the United States. This war we are fighting is being fought on multiple fronts. There's the battle in the culture. There's the battle in our government or public policy. And because of weak and short-sighted Republicans, the culture battle has been abandoned. And because of that, the entire war could be lost. The culture war must be fought and won. That's the truth we dispense in tonight's preamble. Yesterday, we told you how left-wingers are in a perpetual state of misery and never stop complaining. We told you how they will invent things to be aggrieved about. It defines them. It's their whole reason for being, to tear things down, rip them apart, and spread their misery to others. Too many conservatives and Republicans have ceded our culture to these assassins of the human spirit. Case in point, Senator Chuck Schumer of New York. They wanted to build, a, uh, in when I first was assembling them, mm -hmm. they wanted to build a, a congregate living place for retarded children. Mm -hmm. The whole neighborhood was against it. These are harmless kids. They just needed right. some help. We yeah. got it done. Chuck Schumer, the same man who threatened two sitting Supreme Court justices, just referred to kids with special needs as, quote, retarded. This language is, of course, unacceptable. Indeed, it was the left who told us decades ago that the language was inaccurate and demeaning. Schumer has apologized, and thus the biased press wants you to know that this is over. It's done. It shall not be brought up again. It's over because the folks at ABC, NBC, CBS, The New York Times, The Washington Post, CNN, MSNBS, they say so. Chuck Schumer has liberal privilege, don't you know? He and his political party can say denigrating terms against children. They can be racist. They can be Jew haters. They can be anti-Christian. They can break all of these arbitrary rules they impose on our society so long as they say, sorry. Or if they're really good socialists, they can say it was our fault for holding them accountable to their own impossible standards. So long as all those boxes are checked, their transgressions are forgiven. But if a conservative or Republican breaks these rules, it follows them for the rest of their lives. The unfair press will make sure of that. It is the definition of a no-win situation. Liberals can't even win at their own game. So I'm asking the GOP, why are you playing? Here's another example. There's a new teeny bopper movie out there called In the Heights. It's a dancing and singing thing, and I'm not really into it. The cast is 100% minority actors, mostly Latino. But the film's director, John M. Shu, is being lit up on social media tonight because miserable left-wingers who are never happy, they think that Latinos featured in the movie are not dark-skinned enough. The critique is, of course, racist and runs antithetical to Dr. Martin Luther King's vision of a colorblind society. The creator of the movie, Lin-Manuel Miranda, the same guy who created Hamilton, has actually apologized for a lack of Afro-Latinx actors present in the Heights. First, take it from your liberty-loving Latino here. The term Latinx is a made-up term. Those who use it are politically correct incompetence. They are some of the most vacuous and vapid people on this planet. But the bigger point is that critics of this film are bigots. They are focused on the color of people's skin. They are bigots toward whites. One does not apologize to these people. One decries them as racist bigots and tells them to go jump in a lake, go back to school, go buy a clue. 
The next story is also from Hollywood, or more accurately from a person who critiques Hollywood. This guy is Eric Deegans. He works for NPR. That means your tax dollars pay some of this race baiter's salary. Mr. Deegans has launched an attack at Tom Hanks, of all people. In his piece of garbage article, he contends that Hanks and other Hollywood elites like Ron Howard, Steven Spielberg, they need to become anti-racist rather than simply being non-racist. Keep in mind that all three of those men are some of the biggest liberals in our country. These men have done a lot, not only to oppose racism, but through their philanthropy and movie making, have supported our troops and tackled the horrors of war and America's racist past. But as with most left-wing extremists, their efforts are not enough for Eric Deegans. Deegans writes of Tom Hanks, he built a career playing righteous white men. I know the toughest thing for some white Americans, especially those who consider themselves advocates against racism, is to admit how they were personally and specifically connected to the elevation of white culture over other cultures. Over the years, he has starred in a lot of big movies about historical events. He is a baby boomer star who has built a sizable part of his career on stories about American white men doing the right thing. But the stories often leave out black contribution. You guys see what I mean? Even these staunch liberals who have given portions of their fortunes, time, and their voice to equality, that's not enough for a perpetually angry guy like Deegans, who spends every hour of every day seeking out things to complain about, even if he has to invent them. In my opinion, Deegans' criticism is born of a man who has abandoned Dr. King's dream in favor of a society that denigrates and dehumanizes whites, and in so doing, will perpetuate the hate and divisions that will plague future generations forever. It's a never-ending cycle. Now, we came close to breaking this cycle, B.O., before Obama. Now our nation is being forced to its knees in an effort to satisfy left-wing lunatics who have no prayer of ever being appeased, aided by the socialist Democrats, the biased press, and even some in our intelligence community. These people seek to bring hate and misery into our government through the schools and other agencies, the GOP in the meantime, and a perpetual state of retreat from these non-thinking, ever-angry, never-satisfied leftists. It's baffling to me as to why. The American left is the biggest threat and enemy to a United States of America. It's time we all rejected their politics of division and re-engaged in the culture battle. We have to take back our schools, tune out Hollywood, vote against socialists rejecting their vision of division and hate. If we don't, we'll lose everything to these cognitive cretins. Hey, I'm Rob Finnerty. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please join the conversation in the comments below. Don't forget to subscribe too. Hit the bell icon to be alerted to breaking news. And remember, there's a whole lot more on Newsmax TV, America's fastest growing cable news network. Newsmax TV, where real news for real people.